to do list and use how you're feeling as a way to figure out what to do next. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to make that list. We're human beings, which means that our energy levels can rise and fall over the course of the day. Knowing what tasks to work on when those energy peaks and valleys happen won't just help you get things done, it'll help you deliver better results when you do that. Here are the three steps to using energy levels as a gate for working on tasks and your to-do list. Step one, look at your to-do list items and mark those that you know will take more than 75% of your energy to do. Things like writing or planning take more energy for me than anything else. So I mark those for time and Use the verbs on your list as a way to figure out what Take more energy than our list. Step two, start back at the top of your list and mark those that you know will take less than 25% of your energy or focus. I'm able to do things like update my social media channels or organize files on my computer with very little energy or focus. So those are marked as low energy. Again, it's those verbs on your list that will help you recognize those lower energy Step three, ask yourself how you're feeling right now. If you feel like you have high energy, start to work on tasks to mark this up. If you're feeling tired, then ask the tasks that you can do when you've got low energy. I find that working on low energy tasks over a stretch of time allows me to work on one or two high energy tasks later. Try to find a flow that works for you. The question, what do I feel like doing now, didn't offer me a great answer until I started to attach energy levels to on my to-do list. But once I started doing that, the question really made sense, allowing me to be productive no matter how I was doing. And I know it can do the same for you. Imagine this. A co-worker stops by your desk and takes your attention away from that task you were working on. Your flow's been disrupted, and you're trying to think of what you would do. That's when attaching resources to your to-do list items can save the day. I define a resource that you've attached to your to-do list as a person, place, or thing. Your boss, your office, and your email app. They're all resources. Here's how attaching any of these three types of resources can help you when you've been derailed from working on your to-do list. Number one. As a resource is powerful because if you need to speak to, let's say, your boss about a lot of things, well, then you can attach the term boss to all of those tasks on your to do list. Then, the next time you sit down with your boss or you email them, you'll have an agenda of items to possibly discuss. Other people you can use as resources are entire departments, friends, and family. Grouping tasks by people can cut down on the times you disrupt them and paint a great picture of what you've got going on. Number two, some tasks are best done in certain places. Think of it this way. While both your bathroom and kitchen have sinks, you're not going to do the dishes in the bathroom. Attaching locations to tasks will help you make sure you're working on them in the right place as well. Number three, there are certain tasks that are better to be done using one pin than another. Sure, you could hammer a nail in with the back of a screwdriver, but it would be better to use a hammer, right? So let's say you have your work email handled in Outlook and your personal email in Gmail. It'd be more practical to mark emails you need to deal with through your work email with Outlook and practical for you to mark these personal emails using Gmail. Using what you need to have at your disposal attached to a task will work wonders for making your to-do list more doable. Theodore Roosevelt said, do what you can where you are with what you have. If you want to live up to that mantra, Start attaching the resources you need to have to the task on your to-do list. Picture this. It's the end of the day. You look at your to-do list and there's still plenty left to do. You can do three things, and none of those things is to simply move what you didn't do to tomorrow. In this lesson, I'm going to tell you what those three things are. Now, let me be clear. You can move things to tomorrow, but only if you act 
actually intend to give them your attention tomorrow. Don't just leave them arbitrarily. That won't work tomorrow or any day of the week. But here are a few things that will work. Number one, be purposeful. Move tasks that didn't get done today to the next day that you know you can give them your attention. Do this strategically. Look at your calendar before making these moves and map out your to-do list tasks so that you can give those tasks the attention they deserve on the day you're moving them to. Otherwise, you're selling them and yourself short. Number two, be precise. Take a good look at why those tasks didn't get done and see if they are too big to be done as they are written. Break them down into smaller tasks and then be purposeful about moving those tasks to days where they will have your attention back. Number three, be prepared. Remember that nothing is permanent. Understand that flexibility is important in crafting a to-do list. Know that what you intend to give your attention to tomorrow may get derailed. Then, be prepared to follow step one and two again when that happens. If you take a look at what you haven't done today and follow through with the steps I just mentioned, you'll feel less overwhelmed by what didn't get done, be more comfortable about what you did get done, and make the most of your to-do list every single day. The problem with the to-do list that seems undoable isn't necessarily the amount of tasks on it. The problem is that a doable to-do list starts with the basics, basics that can be overlooked and undervalued. The basic to-do list is simple in both form and function. Basic to-do lists use one particular measurement as a foundation of the period. That's because periods of time are objective. We all know how many hours are in a day, Building a to-do list around that gives you a great starting point and a way to measure progress over both tasks completed and the time those tasks receive your attention. Here are three types of basic to-do lists that I encourage you to incorporate into your life. Number one, the daily to-do list. With this type of to-do list, it's understood that the tasks on it are going to have your attention on that day. What's important is to make sure that you list a realistic amount of tasks on it to get done. A good benchmark is 24 tasks in total. That's the equivalent of one task per hour of the day. Now you also want to have a way of scanning and seeing what tasks should be done when. You might want to try using different colors for work and home tasks. Being able to quickly group tasks by verbs is another great thing to try. Number two, the weekly to-do. This list should feature dates when you want tasks to have your attention, so that you can allocate time for them on different days. A. You should craft this list at the end of the week for next week, like I did, or at the start of the week so that you can easily transfer those planned tasks to a daily to do list. Number three, the monthly to do list. This list is ideal to map out attention dates in advance, making sure you give tasks or intentions that need to be worked on over a sustained period of time, the attention they need and deserve. The monthly to-do list is a great list to use to break down larger tasks into smaller ones across a four to five week stretch. This type of list has helped me prioritize opportunities that I can commit to, but also turn down those that I can't. Knowing and practicing the basics is fundamental to success. Once you begin practicing the basics that I've shared with you here, then you'll be able to start building a better to-do list and a more successful one at that. There are going to be instances where basic to-do lists just won't cut it. That's when you need to kick it up a notch and build a next level to-do list that will. Basic to-do lists won't offer you the ability to showcase long-term goals and always give you the traction and focus you need to make certain tasks doable. That's when taking your to-do list to the next level is the best bet. Here are three types of next level to-do lists that I use and recommend that you try. Number one, the goals list. This to-do list type is going to be fairly broad and it's going to shrink and grow as you add more goals to it. Think of it as a running list. 
Putting dates on this list will bring those goals to your attention when you want them to happen. But here's the thing. In order to make these goals doable, the role of the attention date is simply to give you the opportunity to make a goal actionable by turning it into a project. Number two, the project goal. If you want to be head down on a series of tasks that make up a project, then this type of to-do list is ideal. Separate the tasks you may have on a daily, weekly, or monthly to-do list and clearly define them as part of a specific project. I use this type of list when I'm trying to make massive and measured progress on a project. It can do the same for you. Number three, the meeting. If you go to a lot of meetings, then crafting a list for each meeting that features action items assigned to you is a smart move. I bring in a blank sheet of paper to every meeting I attend. Anything that I need to do as a result of the meeting is on that sheet of paper. Then I'll transfer those actions into, for example, my weekly. Much like the project list, the meeting list allows me to focus on being present in the meeting without being distracted by all of the other things that await me on my much broader list. Once you've gotten the basic stuff, transferring your knowledge and understanding to a more advanced type of to-do list will help take your productivity to the next level. Start with one of these next level to-do lists and take it from there. You'll be glad you did. The reason you'll go looking for a to-do list app is so that it can help you in ways that a paper to-do list just can't. But do you know what to look for? There are three basic elements you'll want to consider when deciding on a to-do list app for the first time. Number one, simplicity. How simple is the app in design? Can you navigate it easily without getting lost? If you're struggling with using the app because of how it works, then it's going to be hard to forget good to do this app lets you get in, see what you need to do, and then move on. If there's too much friction with any of those steps, then it's not going to be the app. Number two, ownership. Free apps do have a cost. I've seen far too many free to-do list apps come and go, leaving users frustrated and trying to find a new app when they really should be spending their time doing more important things. I encourage you to find a free to-do list app your budget so that you have more ownership of it. Look at it in this way. Divide the cost of a paid app by the days of the year. Evaluate its price based on the cost per day, and you'll be able to better evaluate its worth, because a good to-do list app will be more than worth its cost per day. Number three, scalability. You'll want to find an app that is as simple as you need it to be, but can scale up to be as powerful as you want it. Look for features that will help the app scale with you and your needs over time. If you find limitations with scalability in an app, you're going to want to consider other options instead. A to-do list app needs to be a help and not a burden. You'll want to feel better about what you need and want to do when you open it, and not just the first time you open it either. You'll want that feeling time and time again. Take the time to look at those three elements I've mentioned and you'll have a greater chance of finding the to-do list app that will work for you today and tomorrow. I started out my to-do list journey with good old-fashioned pen and paper. And there's been a renaissance in paper planners over the last several years, despite the fact that there are more to-do list apps out there than ever before. There's just something about paper that works, and in some cases, works better than any of those to-do list apps. Here are three reasons that paper works as a place to put your tasks. Number one, it's simple to use. You don't have to learn how to use paper. If I was to hand you a sheet of paper right now, you'd know what it is and be able to use it to write down your to-do list. The learning curve is virtually non-existent. You can't say that for any digital to-do list app. Number two, 